Khaled and his army now return to Jerusalem, which on this map is Hero Salima, in case you were wondering. And when they get there, um, the Romans have largely abandoned the Roman military has. But there's enough people manning the walls that you can't get in. So the Arab army is stuck outside, trying to figure out how to get inside so they can capture this holy city. The Archbishop of Jerusalem, a man named Sophronius, by the way, a Christian Arab, a loyal Roman citizen, indicates he's willing to negotiate, but only with Omar ibn al-Khattab, the Khalid. Well, the Khalid is all the way back in Mecca. It'll be weeks before he can be sent for and then return. So they come up with a scheme. And the scheme is, since Khalid is Omar ibn al-Khattab's first cousin, he actually looks like him. So they pretend Khalid ibn Walid is the Khalid. They meet with Sophronius, and while they're talking, somebody had actually met Omar ibn al-Khattab, I'm sorry, had met Khalid ibn Walid, and knew that was Khalid. And so he tells Sophronius, you're being duped, it's not really the Khalid, it's some other dude, it's that general that, that's been tearing us up. Sophronius is outraged, he goes, you lied to me, and he, he calls off the negotiations for the surrender. So now the Arabs are stuck getting the Khalid. Sophronius comes out of the gates, weeks later, to meet the Khalid, because he sees the Khalid's army arrive. And as he's approaching, he sees a man leading a camel, at the front of the army. So for the record, the rich Arabs, the Arabs who were good soldiers, didn't usually ride camels, they usually rode horses, Arabians. And for those of you who don't know, Arabians are fast and agile and they have crazy personality. And so they're, they're perfect for warfare. Camels are a little bit clumsy and slow, they serve a purpose in warfare, but you're better off on an Arabian. In any case, the Arab army is being led by a man leading a camel with a man on the camel. So Sophronius, he's got a giant red hat, he's also a cardinal, right? He's got gold tassels, actual gold, hanging from his hat. He's covered in gold jewelry, he's wearing red robes, he's covered in perfume, he's on a lectica. The lectica was the couch that the Romans would ride, and then they'd have like four or eight men, depending on how big it is, carrying it. And then he has two men, one on each side, fanning him. Of course, right? That's what Jesus would want from his bishops. It's exactly right. And he's coming out on this lectica being fanned. And he comes up to the guy on the camel, and he says, uh, where's the caliph? And the guy on the camel does like this, he nods with his head at the guy leading the camel. So Sophonius turns to the guy leading the camel and goes, where's the caliph? And the guy leading the camel says, I'm the caliph. And Sophonius goes, dude, you're dressed in rags. The guy's pants were, were mended multiple times, his shirt was mended multiple times, and he goes, no, no, I'm the caliph. And Sophonius goes, you've just conquered Iraq and Syria and all of Palestine minus Jerusalem. How is it you're so poor? And the caliph goes, well, why would I collect wealth? I'm, we're not doing this war because I'm trying to plunder anything. I'm a humble man with humble needs. I just need good meal. And then Sophonius goes, why aren't you riding the camel? And Omar goes, uh, that's my servant on the camel. We take turns so that neither one of us gets exhausted. At this point, Sophonius is like, well, what? who just conquered us? What are these Marxists? And so Sophonius gets off the lectica <laughs> because he's shamed off of the thing. And he says, okay. I, I want to talk to you about our surrendering the city to you. And, and, and the caliph says, I have an idea. Let's walk to the city, and I'll tell you what I was thinking the terms would be. And, in, and in, so we'll start there. And Sophonius goes, yes, of course. And as they're walking, Omar ibn al-Khattab says, why don't we do this? All Roman politicians leave Jerusalem. You just go, if you're a politician. So if you're a top bureaucrat, an officer, and you can take anything you can carry. So you can take gold, as long as you can carry. And Sophonius goes, okay, uh, I mean, that's reasonable. That's actually more than a reason why. I just assumed you'd enslave them and take their gold. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see how anybody would be mad about that. And what else? And the caliph goes, oh no, I was thinking that's it. Uh, we, we don't do anything else. And Sophonius goes, wait a minute, I am really confused. So when us Romans capture a city, we enslave a segment, we plunder the city, probably a little bit too much raping too. We might even burn some of it, just for grins and giggles. And then we declare it to be ours. What about that? And Omar ibn al-Khattab goes, no, 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 we're not gonna do any of that. No plundering, no raping, no enslaving, we don't do that stuff. And then Sophonius goes, oh, you're gonna like seize property in the city. And, so, and the caliph goes, no, no, we're not gonna take anybody's property. We're going to leave the city exactly like it is. The only thing I want to do is eject the Roman politicians with whatever they can carry. And Sophonius goes, there's nothing to negotiate. Yeah, we surrender the city this instant. I, I don't understand, actually. They walk into the city. Khalid is one of the men following. Amr ibn al-As, all these guys are on foot. If, if they've got their horses with them, they're leading their horses by the reins, right? Because the leadership is on foot. There's no way they're going to ride it. They're walking. And this is a holy city to them because Jesus is holy to them, because the Jews were holy to them. And so they, they see this as a holy city. Sophonius goes, tell me about your religion as they're walking through the streets. And so Amr ibn al-Khattab starts telling him about Islam. Sophonius goes, it just sounds like a variation of Christianity. I, I feel like our religions are shockingly similar. And Omar ibn al-Khattab goes, yeah, because they are. I mean, we thought we were doing uh, Judaism 3.0. It never occurred to us that we were going to be received as being so different. And uh, he goes, okay, since you've given us such amazing surrender terms, my alarm is going on, and I can't turn it off. It's so embarrassing. It's telling you to put my kids to bed. Um, <laughs> I should have remembered to turn it off, but it didn't occur. He says, you've given us such amazing surrender terms, and because I feel such kinship with your religion, will you do me an honor? Will you come to my church and pray in your Muslim way next to me as I pray in my Christian way? And Omar ibn al-Khattab goes, never. And Sophonius goes, why? He goes, I'm the caliph. The first place I pray in Jerusalem is going to become a mosque. The Muslims will take it, and they will create a place of worship for Muslims, and you will lose it. And I don't want you to lose your church. And Sophonius goes, oh, uh, okay. What if we find an empty piece of Jerusalem and we just pray there? And Omar ibn al-Khattab goes, yes, I accept. An empty piece, something that nobody owns. So they go and they find an empty lot. And they pray. The Archbishop in his Christian way, the Caliph in his Muslim way, side by side. It is a mosque today, that spot, commemorating the first place that the first Muslim Caliph prayed in, in Jerusalem. He nailed it. He, he knew what was coming. And he saved the Church of the Holy Sepulchre for Christians, because that's the church Sophronius wanted him to pray in. At that point, the Caliph says, I want to see the Temple Mount. And Sophronius goes, why? 
and the is because it's holy. It's holy to everybody. It's holy to Christians. It's holy to Jews. It's holy to Muslims. And Sophonia says, nah, we haven't been treating it as holy to anybody. And Omar ibn al-Khattab goes, what do you mean? And so Sophonia says, so after we tore down the second temple of Solomon, when we conquered Palestine, we turned the Temple Mount into a garbage dump to punish the Jews. And, so, and the Khalif goes, what do you mean? And Sophonia goes, yeah, we've been, there's like 500 years of refuse on that thing. It's just a garbage dump. And he goes, show me. They walk up to the Temple Mount, and the Khalif can't believe what he's looking at. He falls on his knees, and he begins clearing the garbage by his hands. His army sees their leader on his knees clearing garbage, and they run up, and they start clearing the garbage themselves. And they clear the garbage off the Temple Mount. The Khalif goes, okay, I want to meet some of the Jews living in Jerusalem. And Sophonia goes, there are no Jews in Jerusalem. And the Khalif goes, what do you mean there's no Jews in Jerusalem? The city's holy to the Jews. How could there be no Jews? And he says, well, as Christians, we pretty much murder them every chance we get. We really hate Jews. In fact, in the war we just did against the Persians, the Jews sided with the Persians. And so we murdered 20,000 Jews in Jerusalem and completely purged the city of its remaining Jewish population. And Omar ibn al-Khattab goes, no, this is wrong. You can't do this. And so he turns to a convert to Islam, a Jewish convert to Islam. And he says, I need you to find me 80 Jewish families that were willing to volunteer to move to Jerusalem so we can reestablish a Jewish presence in the city. And that's how the Muslims conquered Jerusalem. And that's the stuff that's left out of your history books. Isn't that crazy? Because isn't that an amazing story? After Jerusalem, Omar turns to Khalid and goes, I know you fought at Yarmouk, and I know you impersonated me. I really hate you. You're going to go to Mecca, and you're going to spend the rest of your days there. You're not, no more combat for you. I'm retiring you. And I actually don't think he died in Mecca. He did leave, but he never fought another battle. That was it. That was the end of his military career. He, was, he died in bed at age 50. I don't know what, what was ailing him. Something got him. And his final words were, you cannot put your hand anywhere on my body without touching a combat wound. I am covered in scars. It was my dream that God would let me die as a man on the field of battle. Here I am, in a bed, dying like a cow. And that's why I'm going to end the story. <laughs>